Man. <coughs> you gotta <coughs> OG Silver back here. Hey guys, one thing I've noticed, I want to share this with you, and I'm not complaining. But my mom's uh, husband came home. He's not my dad. He's, he's her husband. And he came home from the hospice due to uh, live his final days, weeks, or months, or however long he's got here in the house. Uh, with they got a special medical bed. I got moved to the guest room. Um, there's only a nurse that comes once a week to uh, check his vitals and to uh, change out his medication. But I'm doing the cleaning of the guy because... Uh, when you're bedridden, you lose the control of your bodily functions and you can't get up and go to the bathroom. You can't leave them laying there in their mess, dude. It's uh, unsanitary and it leads to disease. And it's bad for whoever's in the house because there's airborne product particles. And then he needs medication every so many hours. My mom needs medication. Um, it's hard for my mom to walk and stuff and stand up and sit down. So I'm doing the cooking, cleaning, and uh, the medication distribution, the shopping, and stuff. And so I'm bringing this up <coughs> because I don't get a lot of sleep, but I'm starting to get sick again. And I don't want to, first of all, I don't want to get sick and then uh, expose them to you know, sicknesses. But then also, I don't want to get sick and I can't help them because I'm the only one, I'm the only one helping out. So I just want to give you guys an update, man. And, uh, I can only make videos when uh, they're both asleep because when they're up, there's things that got to get done. I think I'm getting an itchy throat. So anyway, I'm in the guest room and I have to speak uh, softly. So without further ado, I want to get into the topic of today's video, which is in maximum security prison, don't hang around flaky people or your cheeks will be achy and wet. So this is going to be a short video because I want to talk to you guys about people's behavior dude and what's interesting about uh, people so this is what I, I was talking to some people I know and let's just say we're talking about dating because um, when I lived in the Philippines with my lovely girlfriend Yoni we did a lot we did things together like we went to the gym we worked out we did martial arts together uh, we traveled together sometimes we took dance lessons together we just did different things because uh, I love her very much she's a wonderful person and she kept me safe, dude, so I was trying to reward her. I'm not really a social guy. But, you know, when you're in a relationship and you love somebody, women, dude, I'm just sharing with you guys, women are social creatures. They like to be seen and heard and, and dress pretty and dance and, and go do things and, and be with their families. It's just how it is. Me, I can just be in the guest room here by myself every day, not doing nothing but working out, doing martial arts and reading books. Maybe I'm weird, maybe I'm eccentric, but I'm stoic. So what I'm trying to say is she enhanced my life, so to repay her, we did a lot of uh, social things together, man. And one thing I noticed, man, is like, you know, when you're a social person, you meet people based on their um, appearance. Everybody puts their best face forward. It's called your social uh, persona or your public persona. And then you have your family persona. Then you have your your private persona, then you have your ego in or your dark self. That's your persona you share with yourself. If you're lucky in this life, guys, <coughs> you at least have one or two people in your life that you can just share your dark side. Like, I can share my dark side with Yoni. And sometimes it makes her scared, but she appreciates it and she respects it and she shares her vulnerable side with me. So we have a very intimate relationship. And intimacy is not just sexual. Intimacy means into me you see like you're, you're so comfortable with this person they're so comfortable with you that you can see the real them that maybe even their kids don't know their brothers and sisters don't know their parents don't know their co-workers don't know but you know so you might ask how is this tied to today's video well I want to tell you like this dude when I'm social with Yoni or just when I'm like here you know in the city um, let's just say for example when my cousins come to visit or whatever and maybe they bring some people with them. Um, I look at people, man, and I look at their actions, dude. I don't go by uh, what they say. I go by what they do. So the title of the video is In Maximum Security Prison, Don't Hang Around Flaky People or Your Checks Will Be Achy and Wet. I want to share with you guys what the Webster's Dex definition is of a flaky person. So basically, a flaky person is a person you can't trust to do whatever they said they were going to do. 
and I'm going to repeat this not for the sake of clarity, but so you understand the severity. If you meet a person, dude, and they say to you, oh, tomorrow I'm going to come by at 6 and I'm going to bring over some water for your mom because she needs water and the tap water is not good. And 6 o'clock they don't show up, dude, and they don't to give you a precursor like, hey, I'm stuck in traffic, or hey, I had a flat, or hey, I'm running late, or hey, I just now got up, and they don't show up at all. And then you don't hear from them later, maybe 8, 9, 10 o'clock at night, <coughs> and they got some excuse. That's a flaky person to me. Or, if you can't depend on a person because, if you can't depend on a person in peace, and this is, talking about a maximum security prison. If you if you meet people in prison, and let's just say, for example, they say, hey man, you know, next unlock, I'm gonna meet you on the weight pile, we're gonna do some chess, man, so get the bench, you know me. Because some prisons you gotta get the bench, depending on what race you are, what car you are, what uh, geographical uh, place you're living, you gotta get the bench and reserve it as soon as you hit the yard. And then you got the first, then the next yard unlock, the next race or car or constituency gets it. So you get out there and you get, you get the bench and then dude don't show up. Then he comes out next time like, oh man, I overslept, man. Or, oh man, you know, I had this little punk in my cell, you know what I'm saying? Oh man, I had to make some pruno. Like, you can't depend on dude, this is in peacetime, right? See, so maximum security prison, it's a very heightened environment. Like, the little things we take for granted out here, like a person may be late or they may say they're gonna do something, they don't do it. They might promise you they're going to do something, they let you down. You can't live like that in maximum security prison because in times of peace, which is very rare in maximum security prison, I'm going to tell you something, dude. This is a true story, guys. When I was in maximum security prison, I worked out every day. I don't want to lie. Let me see. I woke up. I first woke up in the morning. Count time was at 5. I would get up at 4. I'd do my stretching, pray, do some martial arts, punching, and kicking. Count time goes by. I would continue doing my stuff. Then it's the first unlock for breakfast. Um, chow release. I get up, go to chow, get my sack lunch, come back, count time. Then yard release. This is before I got a job. I would just get out on the yard. I would run from yard release to yard recall, which I think was like two hours. Don't quote me. Either it's two hours or three hours. Let's just say it's two hours. I run for two hours. Yard recall. Come in. Count time. When count time come, I'm eating my sack lunch. Yard release. I go out on the yard. I would do my um, calisthenics, and I was doing Tai Chi because I told him I was a Buddhist monk, and I'm just going around the yard doing rolls and flips and falls, and I'm doing the ball. If you know, if you guys know Tai Chi, I'm doing the ball, all these different things like this. So then, you know, yard recall, count time. Okay, child release, go to dinner. Yard, uh, yard release, I go out there. Pull-ups and dips, weights, hitting it. I did this every day. I was so overtrained, guys, and here's why. Man, in maximum security prison, any drop of a hat, there's a gang war between the Serenos or the, the, the Serenos and the Ortinos, or the Serenos and the Blacks, or the Bloods and the Crips, or the BGF against the Hells Angels, or the Woods against the Blacks. Dude, it was just always some stupid shit going on. Then you lock down for a period of uh, a couple of weeks to a month, depending on the severity. So then I'm so overtrained that when I'm locked down, I was able to stretch and do my martial arts punches and kicks, and then I do body weight exercise, burpees, and stuff like that. And this was my recuper. This was called passive recuperation. So the reason I'm bringing that up, man, is because. Uh, Man, in maximum security prison, don't hang around flaky people or your cheeks will be achy and wet. In time of peace, if you have a person, whether it's your car, your set, your hood, man, heck, even if you're a gang member and then your homie don't do what he said he was going to do, and you guys might think it's a small thing, it's not because here's what happened. Flaky people cannot be trusted. So what happens is, let's say you're the new dude, man, and let's just say you're going to ride with the white boy car. Let's say you just ride with the woods. But man, there's some Hells Angels that's taking a liking to your cheeks because you're just a soft Justin Bieber looking dude, man. You just got the pretty face and the pouty lips. You got a little curvedness to your little little white boy cheeks. You're so dumb when you take a shower, you're in there naked, whereas most convicts, they covered up. <laughs> man, that's the first thing I know is in max security prison. When you're a convict, you take a shower, dude. 
You go in there, man, and you, you shower with your fucking jacket on, man, and your boxers, man. This is how I knew I was an inmate because I seen the cars and I quickly switch. I go in there with my jacket on and then my boxers and you wash up like that. So you, you're killing two birds with one stone. You're washing your jacket and your boxers and your, 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 your skin. And so this way, man, uh, this way, um, you're not exposing your, your, your virgin butt cheeks, man, because dudes is horny like, you know how you, you see these IG models, man, on Instagram when they got their, um, their thongs on or you walking down the street, you see a girl with a fat ass or sexy like that and you just looking because human beings, you know, men are visual. Well, man, men, men in maximum security prison, they's looking at Justin Bieber's butt cheeks when he turns around his little pink little butthole, right? Because he's stupid. And then he's washing in between his butt cheeks and everything, and he's just smiling and stuff, and they're just looking at him. Boy, you sure is pretty. If you got the little girl butt cheeks, right? So I'm just saying, man, you got to be careful, man, because then what happens, dude, the hell's angels might take a liking to you. And even though you're in the wood car, see, there's hierarchies in these cars and these sets. Man, the Hell's Angels and the ABs and the KKK, the Aryan Brothers, they run this shit because they own some savage shit, so then they pass it, okay? Hey, whose boy is that? Oh, man, he's just a wood, you know? He's just a square dude. He comes in there, man. But who's protecting him? Oh, he just riding with the people. No, I want him to be my bitch. You understand? Yeah, but he's part of the wood cars. So what you saying, wood? What you saying? You gonna stop me from making him my bitch? I got double life, motherfucker. What is he to you? You gonna give your life for him? You gonna take his place? So then the wood would be like, no, nah, man, I ain't gonna tell you. I was just saying, but hey, if you want it, you know, hey, man, what you wanna do, man? You wanna bring him down to the laundry. Tell him you wanna show him around the pen, bring him down to the laundry. About three o'clock, man. If you bring him down there, I would come see you. So then your wood homie would be like, hey, man. Let me give you a tour of the prison because it's important. Maybe you might want to work in laundry, maybe not, but you want to see how they clean our underwear and socks. So that way you might want to make a friend down there so that way you can get the same underwear back every time, okay? You're like, okay, scoop de doo da day. You go down there, man. And then the, then all of a sudden the Hell's Angels is like, I like you and I want you. And then you look to your wood friend like, hey, man, what's going on? You'd be like, hey, brother, um, hey, man, every man for himself. Because he's flaky. So that's all I'm trying to say, man. In maximum security prison, don't hang around flaky people or your cheeks will be achy and wet, dude. Because here's what happens in maximum security prison. Once you get violated, it can go one of three ways. One, if you're lucky, the one dude that violated you, he'll like you so much, he'll just make you his main bottom bitch boy. He'll make, he'll make you his punk. Number two, there might be a rule, ain't no fun unless the homies can have some. So since they all violated you, mostly when they violate you, it's normally three, four dudes, man, because it takes one dude to hold each arm and one dude to hold each leg wide. So that's five dudes they taking turns on you, and they might just want to pass you around. Or number three, man, you snitch on them, and then you piece you up. Now you're a snitch. Because even though you've been butt scraped several times violently, the convict code said you can't you can snitch to the police, even though the convict code says they don't like rapists, right? But it's okay for them to grape you. You see the inconsistency? I said three ways, or here's the fourth way. Now, I'm not telling you to do that. I'm just saying if you got yourself, you're a soft little Justin Bieber type motherfucker. You're a soft king motherfucker with pink lips, T.I. son king. You know, you're just a soft little twitchy boy, right? You're a soft little flaky dude, right? This is what I recommend you get violated like that. I fend the candy man. I get me a candy bar, man. And I just go and put in work on all five of them. Fuck it, because you already got a life sentence. Let me tell you something. When five dudes take your cheeks, man, there's a high probability, man, somebody in there got AIDS, HIV, Hep V, Hep C, STD, gonorrhea, syphilis, herpes, chlamydia. They're savages. So now you got shit slowly festering in your butt cheeks, five different dudes and ripped open your fucking, you got hemorrhoids and prolapse, man. You got a life sentence anyway, so if you're going to be in there the rest of your, your life, why die a slow death from AIDS and, and butt prolapse when you just go out like a savage and redeem yourself? 
So if you like this type of content, man, leave a thumbs up for the algorithm and leave a comment, man. Let me know your thoughts on this here, man, how you feel about that, you know, about flaky people in general, your thoughts. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe because I'm looking to get 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year because I'm really looking to help a lot of youngsters, man, because there's a... Being in the United States, I see a lot of lost youngsters, and they're getting younger and younger, dude. Like, they got dudes 10, 11 years old here um, robbing uh, Wells Fargo Bank. They just had a dude here on the news, the first grade. He killed his teacher, dude. He brought a gun to school, killed his teacher. So it's starting younger and younger and younger. They know not what they do. So it's up to us OGs, man, to help them. So if you believe in the mission, Thumbs up, man, and channel, man. Subscribe. <coughs> Hit the notification all bell. Most importantly, share the channel. So until next time, hold yourself back. Out.